just nod your head to the music like I do, Jeremiah. Wake you up. I'm in rare form, you guys. They call themselves the Bad Batch. One of these times I'm gonna head being so hard my hat's gonna fall off. Hit the mic and it falls. <laughs> That's what the chat wants. The mag. That's what the chat wants. That's what the chat wants. Get ready, boom. Hey everyone, welcome back to another Dynamite episode uh, of Empire Radio. I'm Jeremiah. I'm Drew. And I'm Andrew. And we're back with Bad Bad Season 1, Episode 9. Ahsoka Lo Returns. Lost Bounty. <laughs> we did the thing again during the watch party. Where yeah, we it's not funny Ahsoka anymore. It's up. just sad. <laughs> I don't think it's sad. I think it's, well, it's sad for me. It's not. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, everyone. Uh... And if Ahsoka ever comes, I'm never going to well, believe you. <laughs> no, because they're not going to say anything about Ahsoka. <laughs> no, and Andrew still would. <laughs> oh, I still would. I and would Andrew like, see, I told you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Drew, because Drew, during the stream, he was like, yeah, you're, you're like that one Ewok. And like now, if you actually tell the truth, I'm not going to believe you. And I was like, okay, that's fine. Because that's kind of the point. If she actually does show up. <laughs> Uh, but Jeremiah's tired tonight. I'm tired tonight, and Drew's in rare form. I'm wide awake, boys. Let's he get is it. Wired. I don't know why. I'm uh, just happy to be here. Yeah. So this is this is this is gonna be fun, one way or the other. Yep. It's gonna be great. It's gonna be it's fun gonna for be me. A, I don't know about those two. Like but... I like I said, it's gonna be another dynamite episode. So, like it's it's definitely gonna be a banger, is right? This the seventies. What? I feel like that's more of an 80s thing. Dynamite, like, yeah. Late, late 70s. Like, I could go with Groovy next week if you want Ooh, for 70s. Uh, wait, what, what would be good uh, disco era slain? Groovy. Groovy. Or. I don't know. My. I'll or we my could channel parents. our inner uh, daddy pal. <laughs> we'll, talk, we'll have your dad on next episode, and then that will just be the whole 60s vibe. We'll just have your dad here just hanging with you. Yeah, yeah. I, I nothing about Star Wars. Yeah, that would be the best part about it. I would actually pay good money to see Andrew meet your dad for the first time. I think that would be really cool. <laughs> that would be a f an interesting experience. It would, it would be really cool. <laughs> anyway, right. yeah. bad bad. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so we're now entering the second half of the season. Uh, so. How do you feel about this start to the second half? I liked it. Good start. I I think I think it was it was uh -oh. it was strong. I think it was strong. I don't I like I really I really wasn't expecting to get Omega back that fast. Yeah. yeah. That quickly. Um, yeah, that's, that's the one thing. Like, I thought yeah. that this episode would be like episode like ten or eleven, not right after eight. So, right, we're yeah. gonna have a couple, yeah, yeah. at least one or two episodes yeah. of them searching and stuff. Yeah, but we did get a lot of like we, we got a lot of information. We got a lot of information that's very valuable for us right now. So I feel yeah, like, and I th and I think, I think the content we got of Finnick was great. Like mm -hmm. I, I always. I always love seeing Finnick. Yeah. Um, especially knowing that she's this competent against Cad Bane. Dude, she handled. Which is, yeah, which is pretty cool. So, I mean, like, this isn't a bad episode. I, I guess I, I guess I was hoping with Omega being separated from them, I was like, okay, here we go. The tension's about to start building. Like, we're, we're gearing, slowly gearing up to the season finale, you know? Mm -hmm. And for them to get her back already, I was like, uh, "Oh, <laughs> okay. Well, for the night time in a row, I don't know what next episode the next episode is going to hold at all." You know, um, right? So, well, yeah. I th yeah, like because I kind of thought similar to that, where like it would be, I mean, we still uh, Crosshair is still a bad guy, and I didn't think he would be a bad guy this long. 
I did. I, f I figured oh, really? it would be probably until the season finale, yeah. Yeah. All right. So apparently he's in uh, good enough health to be flying his own ship. Dude, back to... Well, he wasn't flying. Oh, he didn't fly. He was in the co-pilot's chair. Yeah. He had a pilot with him. He, remember, because he, he, he yelled, yelled at, at the Kel... He yelled at him, like... He's like, you better catch them. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. blah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. But we never saw him, though? No, we did. No, we did. You see him from, like, over the guy's left shoulder. Mm-hmm. Oh, so it was pretty he, quick. He, was he, he in the gunner it. position or something? Like, yeah, yeah. He was in this. He was in the co-pilot seat, the higher mm -hmm. one. The, it was like behind, like the the way that ship was was like the driver, and then the guy was above him, and so he was up here yelling at him. Oh, well, since we already started in the first scene, you might as well jump scene by scene. Uh, so it starts off there. Uh, the Bad Batch. They're fleeing Braca. And being chased by uh, Crosshair in one of their three ships that they brought. And so they're trying to find, scan the area for another escaping ship, which Cad Bane would be on. But there was no, nothing on the scan. So uh, Hunter, he has to make the difficult decision to jump to hyperspace and escape without getting Omega back. So, yeah. What do you think about that opening scene? The it tensions good. were high. Yeah, it was good, it and was and it good. it made a lot of sense. Like, he's he's like, no, don't go to hyperspace. We need to find Omega. Tech, text like, or was it Echo? I don't remember. He's like, one of them is like, yeah, uh, Cad Bane isn't here. If we get shot down, she's never coming back. So yeah. we need to actually survive. And I was like, yeah, that that checks out. That's a good point. Let's let's do that. Let's let's make it. So, right after this, it flashes to Omega in her cell, basically, on As Cad Drew said, she's in a box. <laughs> we were watching the stream, and he just sees the cell, and he's like, they've got her in a box. Like, I was so like, sad. I was like, yeah, I kind of, sure, I guess. I guess, I guess the <laughs> cell is a box, but... <laughs> um. So she's in there, and she's, and uh, what's the droid's name? Toto. Toto, that's right. He's out there. Uh, she's voiced like, by Seth Green. That's that's what I hear. And so, yep. uh, he st he still has his broken leg. He's just like waving around. I was just thought it was funny that he's still broke, and she's like demanding, like, get me out of here. Like, I thought that was kind of weird. That, like. He's supposed to be scared of her while she's behind a, a shield, but whatever. But I thought it was really cool when Cad Bane takes that first step down and the guitar starts playing. It's like, yeah, I really loved that. That was just really, I was like, oh. the little jingle. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was a great way to introduce him as in as the second time we see him, because it's just because I don't remember in the Clone Wars that western music playing when he was around was that how it was in the clone wars i don't remember but i like it right but because I mean, now it, it's very obvious now that yeah. it's yeah western i mean they're music. following suit with the rest of star wars everybody has their own little their jingle little motif. Jingle. It's, yeah. they're important they have their own yes does jar jar have his own theme i don't even remember no that's it's just that's the bar, 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 bar. Uh, that's all it is Cad Bane's kind of theme was kind of cool. How does it go, just... Drew? Couldn't tell you. <laughs> but it was good. Tell us. Tell us, Drew. It how does good. how does it go? Imitate the 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 acoustic guitar. I don't I don't remember. Okay. Come on. No, just go. All right. <laughs> um, but anyway, Cad Bane introduces himself. I thought it was interesting that he's like Cad Bane at your service, but like he's not gonna be serving Omega at all. Anything like he's like his he's humor was out. really cool. I liked it. I, I, I don't feel think, like I his... don't think he was very humorous. This no, I, I mean I guess not humor is the right word, but like the way he was like introduced himself, like that whole scene, I thought was really well done. 
Well, yeah, even like when he sees Fennec for the first time, like, like he, you know, nods his head with him and grabs his hat, like. Yeah. It's interesting. Like he would think, like, why would you like do the detail of doing that, like when you see a rival bounty it's, hunter? But it's, it's just part of who he is. Like, yeah, it's, it's very he's, Western. He's like, like they're he's like a cowboy man. Like, mm -hmm. that that's what that's what they do. They tip their hats. To the ladies. At, at everything. To oh. the little ladies. Uh, yeah. I, I mean, you're not he wrong. Says, he says that like a million times. You're not wrong. I think <laughs> I think they tip their hats to more things. But yeah, you're not wrong. But uh, anyway, Cad Bane, he makes... After that, he makes a uh, call to Lama Su on Camino, And they give him a... Rendezvous point, which is called Boravio, which is an abandoning abandoned cloning facility of theirs. That sounds is, like uh, like a rich person's like house in Florida. Like, oh, we're gonna go down to Boravio this weekend and have have a party. You know what I'm saying? It sounds just like well, that. maybe if David was here, he could say if he knows any place called Bora viewing but he's well, probably where he lives so probably he says he like lives in like five minutes away from like all these famous people so and a beach well that's everywhere in florida you're like that's true it's like us and lakes they're everywhere yep uh i am not pulling anything uh maybe bora bora oh yeah i think it's his first uh mention ever yeah. so no, i actually don't think it actually it, i don't think there's a place that's actually called that either so Sorry to let everyone down. Dang but, it, I was uh, going to go there. No summer vacations to Boravia this Boravia. You know, this Unless you buy, get rich, buy an island. And name and it that. call it that. Name it. So win a $500 million Powerball, and you could you could do it. Or maybe Dave Filoni has an island somewhere named that. No, that's not his style. He has a cowboy hat. He he he's like Cad True. Bane. He's, he's a yeah, Cad Bane he, style. He, so he just the, has people in boxes. The... Is that what you're trying to say? What? What? Oh. Anyway, uh, <laughs> I was just gonna say that Dave doesn't. Seem no, yeah, that's not his style. It's it's, it's more island. like a. He'd buy like a vintage, Johnny Depp. I feel like I feel like he'd buy like a vintage Cadillac before he'd buy a. Or a vintage possibly. horse. Or a wolf. Ooh, or a horse wolf. Uh, wow, you are in rare form. <laughs> <laughs> We're only a few minutes in, and we've already got a reference to the horse wolf. So, the thing one of a kind. One of a well, kind. He, he did do Avatar: <laughs> Last Airbender, so he would combine two random animals. That's true. Make, That's so true. true. See, sense. see. No, don't, don't see? give that to Drew. Don't you do? I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm giving it to Drew. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> But anyway, um, it's an abandoned cloning facility, which is interesting because Kaminoans are known for staying on Camino and never leaving. Yeah. And being isolated on that planet. So mm -hmm. it's interesting that they would have an off planet uh, facility. Yeah. And it was interesting how we have, we'll, we'll kind of jump in the gun a little bit, but all the buildings were suspended in the atmosphere which is interesting it kind of reminded me of cloud city that's what i thought it was for a second when i first saw the the first mm -hmm. building i was like whoa but then i was like no it's not the same thing but this is interesting um uh, but after this it flashes to or it continues and and, and so lama su is talking with Nala say and saying, you know, when we get Omega back, we're going to, you know, bring her to the sub levels or whatever, uh, extract the DNA, the DNA that we need and then have her terminated. And so, uh, Lama, or uh, Nala say, like all these names are just too complicated to say back to back, but Nala well, say, well, there's one less to remember after this episode. Oh, GG. Um, and it's not Dad. Nala. Hey, Dad, Tonwee's here. Not anymore. Tonwee's <laughs> dead. Dad, Dad, Tonwee's dead. Yeah, that's, that sounds just like Boba. Good job. Thank you. 
I was yeah, saying should... it sounded kind of like Oliver Twist. Like, please, sir, I want some more. <laughs> please, sir. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it sounds like we're in rare form tonight, everyone. Uh, this is a weird episode. This Chole. Is um. <laughs> Okay, now I'm all, I'm all I gotta go find my place in my notes. Um, but uh, so Nala say has a, a reaction to this that she's gonna be terminated. So now we know that you know, obviously, we knew that Nala say was invested in her, but now she's worried that there's conflicting plans, which later on in the episode, I think we know that she knew that already. Um, but now she knows it's, it's about to be realized if Omega is delivered. So, yeah. Um, then it flashes back to Omega and Toto trying to fix himself. And she offers to fix him. And he immediately, you know, no, that's not going to happen type of thing. Uh, but then it flashes to uh, the Bad Batch. And they uh, were able to identify Cad Bane. Which was interesting that, you know, um, was it Sid knew of him, but didn't really have any way of, you know, contacting him or anything like that. So that's interesting that even he's elusive to her, but still known by her. Uh, and then this is where we get our another big uh, major uh, detail drop from Tech that he continued to scan Omega's DNA and discovered that she is a pure first-generation clone uh, of Jango Fett, and that Boba Fett, also known as the Alpha, was the only other one to have a pure DNA sample of the host. So, that's a lot of information. Because does this mean then that you know, she's not force sensitive and she doesn't have any special abilities or anything. She's just simply a clone or do we still think there's something else there? No, I, I like how, <laughs> like how would that work? Like, oops, we made two pure, gen like pure blood, pure DNA clones of Jango Fett. We happen to give one force sensitivity. Like, yeah. I feel like that wouldn't, that wouldn't work. It would have been, it would have been more believable if she was like, I don't know, Django Fett's DNA and they happened to get their hands on some DNA from a Jedi or something. Which, I mean, to be fair, could in all practicality be a thing. But well, it well, really wouldn't really necessarily don't. have to be like... She wouldn't have to be, wouldn't have to be born into her. her. Like, because I think it's just when you are born, like you are coming to existence you are automatically force sensitive or not. I don't think that it's just because you clone a force sensitive person that the clone would be right. But what I'm saying, if they're versa. making a copy, but they're copying non something. I don't think it works like that. Right. If they're copying a non force user or someone that's not force sensitive, that we know they, it, it just, it doesn't just happen like by happenstance, you know, we're like, Oh, one of the clones is force sensitive, you know, No, I'm saying that would be the case. That's what I'm saying. Like, Right, which is why it's for me it's not believable. Because like it's not like she is she's a real person, but her DNA and everything is literally just like they just made her. You know what I mean? Like she's not she wasn't birthed. So she's not a separate human be like she's just Yeah, and also but it, it is kind of confusing too because she is a girl and Jiggle Well, Fett's I mean not I would girl. imagine that the Kaminoans could do that very easily. Well, I'm wondering just I don't really know enough about the biology of DNA, but is it just the XY chromosome thing that's different between male, female? Like that is the, the main difference. But I'm saying, like, on the other 22 chromosomes, I don't know. Are there other things that would manifest? Like, I definitely took uh, chemistry and not biology. I took biology, but I don't remember that. Or no, I took about. I actually we just did take biology. I don't remember we just like any of it. Took it's apart a pig. That's all I remember. Well, I could definitely ask my high school biology teacher, Miss Quinn, to see if. Oh, uh, Miss Quinn, call her maybe, up. Get her in maybe here. Maybe I could have her leave us a voicemail. Ooh, that'd be cool. Explaining in a minute. 
Dude, that'd be cool. That could be. That could actually be cool. And we would I actually listen to, to it on the Bad Batch instead of. Ooh, Ooh. could do that. That'd be cool. Um, you should send. How old is Miss Quinn? Uh, she's probably in her fifties right now. She's super cool. So like, she. That's not old. That's not old for mm-hmm. to be your biology teacher in high school. What? Did you just insult Jeremiah? What is that supposed to mean? This is literally <laughs> two thousand. Yeah, to to be Jeremiah's biology teacher. No, like teacher. she must have been right. literally have to be six hundred years a old. This is literally like true, but like she she probably was a very ago. no, like she's a younger teacher. Like my biology teacher, she's a little older now. You know what I mean? Like, because she was old when she taught me. So she was a young biology teacher. That's what I was asking. Like, was she in her, like, 20s or early 30s? She would have been, like, in her mid to upper 30s when she was my teacher. Gotcha. So now it's 15 years later since I had that class. And so, so we're she... still we're still talking about this. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll see if I'll reach out to Miss Quinn. But, yeah. All I'm saying is bringing this full circle... I, if anything, yeah, she has some sort of a skill, like an I, edge. I don't think, I don't think I've sensitive. never think been sensitive. on board with her being force sensitive. I've never thought it. So, I don't, well, I don't want her to be. Like, there, there's enough, there's enough focus on Jedi. But, there's enough. But do we focus still think on... that there's something different about her than I, just? There could be. No, the difference is that she's a pure, unaltered yeah, clone. And she ages normally. And they want that DNA so they can make more. Yeah, but I'm saying I feel like there's still something about her that is a skill set or something that was added to the first generation thing. Maybe she's, like, really good at math. Maybe she just is, like, Boba Fett and just amazing. Or she can, can like, immediately recognize a song on the radio. Mm. Possibly. But I'm just saying because... Because if Boba is Alpha and she's Omega, that's the Greek alphabet, the first letter and the last letter. So yeah. I feel like Boba was created first to be part of the contract with Fett. But I want to know why they created Omega. And Omega's Alpha. younger than Boba, right? I'm assuming... Significantly. Yeah. Significantly. Yeah. Boba Fett would literally be like... Oh, yeah, it's like the same. 13, 14 years old right now. She's... Like 11. I like she's probably I thought, about yeah, I thought he was age. older than that. The cloning started 10 years before the Clone War. So the Clone War added on to that is 13. By now, it's probably... So we're a few months after that, so she's probably 13, 14. Boba's 13 or 14 years the old. The chat's saying he's 13. Yeah, well, guess what? Well, I'm saying if she was created... She could have been 11. We don't know. And I mean, Boba, I'm not looking at her. You can't tell by looking at a cartoon character. No, like I that. think they've like, said her name, her well, age too. They considerably think... younger. She's within a year. Or two yeah, of Boba. eleven is in like two a year like, later. She's probably, two years later. I'm guessing she's made a year later or something. Yeah, slightly younger. But I just want to know why they chose to make her, even if she was the same as age. Why did they choose to make and not her tell Jenga? Or it was Jenga. Jenga. <laughs> Jenga. <laughs> Everyone memes, get it. Memes, Jenga, Fett. Jenga, Fett. Jenga, Fett. <laughs> Jenga, Fett. <laughs> Jenga Fett. Make the memes. Um, <sighs> but I don't know. I just, I feel like there's still something else there. But it could we'll be her hair. To... That is true. She's blonde and. She has hair. The only other blonde hair. clone that I've seen is Rex. So what's He dyes the... his hair. We don't know that. His actual, his natural color is blue. That's why I changed it. That's why I chose blue as his armor color. I don't think that's true. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you had me. Let me tell you something. If you say anything confidently enough, you at had least for me. a second, at least for a second. You, yeah. you had me. Uh, I'm tired of you lying to me all night. <laughs> <laughs> Just how Ahsoka was in this episode. You didn't see her? Shush. Let's she keep was, going. She was one of the clones in one of those green tubes. Oh, yeah. Not sure. Which were those clones, Snoke? We're jumping all over the place. No, keep going. Was, keep going. Yeah, no. Keep going. Gosh. Anywho. Um, it, then after that, it jumps to back to Omega. And the droid, uh, Toto finally says, all right, you can help me. You're just a child. And you're not going anywhere because we're in a ship. Like he's. It's a good point. And keep in mind, all of this stuff could have been avoided. If 
if uh, Cad Bane just quick fixed the guy's, the droid's leg. Like, yeah, this is his, he was too focused on the mission, didn't care about his only friend in the galaxy. Like, he's been there with him by his side and he can't just fix his leg. So, this is all Cad Bane's fault. Um, but she, it was nice. She, she fixed them and then shut them off. It was funny. It was just like, she could have just turned them off from the beginning, but she was that nice. Like she cared about the droid enough, even though she, he was the bad guy. Mm -hmm. Um, she's like, sorry. Like she just apologized after she, she turned them off. Um, but so then this is when the, she should have put him in the box. He said, put him in the box. Like, fix them, turn them off, and then put them in the box, and then no lock the box. No one puts in a box. No. Nope. I, I feel like this is, this is like, reminding me of, like, that movie, uh, was it Matilda? Oh, like, gosh. Like, the, the the principal's office, like, there was that torture room or whatever. They put the kids in there, and I was, like, knives and spikes sticking out, and they get, like, staying there, like, couldn't move. Do you guys not know what I'm talking about? Uh, it's been years. It's been years, mind. and it's that movie scared me as a kid. I never wanted to watch it. Maybe I need to do that chocolate cake eating contest on the stream sometime. Just make a giant chocolate Ooh. cake and just have everyone cheering for me. Dude, I mean, heck yeah. yeah. I'll go buy All you right. one right now. <laughs> buy one? I'm going to make yeah, a cake. Okay, well, said, you I'll make... buy you one. I, I kind of suck at making cakes, though. Drive 15 minutes. <laughs> give it to you. Help you make it. No, I would just go buy I one could, at Target. If you're, yeah. I got my stand mixer right there. I can. He does. He yes, does. he does. And if you're listening, chat, it's behind them. Yes. Our listeners, Adam. Um, but this is when, anyway, she fixes the droid, turns them off, and this is when they're arriving at Borovio. And so Cad Bane, he's uh, needing the help from Toto to help navigate or whatever through the clouds. Um, but he doesn't come. And so Cad Bane's already, he, he lands, and he's like a little worried, like, okay, what's going on? He knew something was up, so he goes down there. Did anybody think about Rosanna or Africa? Either of the songs when he said Toto? No. No, I just it, keep okay. thinking of what's it called? It isn't Dorothy? Dorothy. Yes. John John Williams' son is in a '80s band. Like, is it Toto? Like the he's a guitar player. John Williams' son is a guitar player for like Toto or one of no, those. No, he's not. That's uh, Steve. 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 Or Luger. a bass player or something. Chat, help us out. No, Andrew's looking up right now. Um, but Cad Bane goes down there. He sees that Toto is is turned off. Oh wait, 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 wait. He f he was the lead vocalist. For, um, for Toto from 1986 to 88 and then back again 2010 to 2019. Is someone dog and dying in the background? I, I think that's my neighbor, Robert and Olivia's dog, Texan. He does that sometimes. Yeah, well, you, t you need to tell him that we're recording. I'm sure he understands that when I tell him, so yeah. I'll let him know. But yes, uh, well, to answer your question, no, I did not think of Africa at all. Okay. Oh, I did. Every single time he said the name, I could hear it in my head. Da, na, 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 na. You know what I'm talking about? I know the song. It did not it's, sound like that song, but it's a beautiful, the song. It's a beautiful sun song. <laughs> it's a beautiful sun. It is. So he, he anyway, he turns on Toto and he's like, "Where's where's the asset?" and well, clearly he's right here. Oh, she's here. Oh, like it, the, like the expression that he had. That was exactly like. That was pretty show. good. That's yeah. why I did it like that because that's how it goes. Wow. You, you, and you all you had to Yoda say. Oh. I can't do your voice. That's why I didn't oh. do it. Where's your Yoda voice? You said you were gonna do it on Tuesday. Yeah, I'm gonna do it on you Tuesday. Said that, <laughs> you just saying that going. for the past like ten Tuesdays. You, Okay, we had a whole discussion about this in the Discord. Just keep going. Just keep going. All right. So, oh, I should, I kind of jumped again, but Omega found her calm. Her thing. calm. That was a very intense moment, too. But I thought she was going to, like, 
go back in the box and act Maybe. like nothing happened. Or hide in one of the doors or something. I don't know. But she got away. Great. So she's running away, blah, blah, blah. Um, she's trying to... Uh, let's see. She's trying to uh, turn on her comm and, you know, get in contact. And she... The signal does get through, but it's so far away from the bad batch that they can't pinpoint any location. Uh, tech tries to walk her through how to get a power surge to uh, aid with that. And when she's trying to do this, uh, Cad Bane catches up to her. And he has this weird line. What is it like? By hook or a crook, you're coming with me or something like that? I don't know yeah. what that means. But it was just Cad Bane doing his thing. And so, I was more so distracted by the fact that they have technology powerful enough. Like I, I don't know how far away they were, but they were far enough away that they had to do a hyperspace jump to get there. And they were still able to hear her. Like radios, that, that man. Is, dude, that's some incredible communication technology. It's true. Like, you can't uh, even talk to someone in, in the same town sometimes if you go through a dead spot. I, I feel like it's because they use, like, Duracell batteries. Like, True. The, the, That's the fair. They clearly weren't stuff. powerful enough to, to send her signal. So Well, not that far away. Yeah. But they moved, and they got, they got it done. They got it done. All got right. it done. All Cad right. Bing. <laughs> <laughs> okay um but no i just lost my sp spot in my notes where am i where are we? okay cad bane catches up yep you know grabs her destroys yep. the comm link yep Got and him. blah 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 and then we hear a gunshot in the back and i was like uh oh I, who got I, shot I, why is someone shooting now i knew at this point fennec was there because i recognize the hallways and that hallway is in the the uh trailer trailer oh so i, I totally forgot coming. about that but um i did not expect that she was sh of shot ton way like i didn't expect that i was kind of sad by that even though i didn't care i we barely see that character so like i wasn't yeah, she also wasn't one of the good ones apparently well she didn't she, know she, was, she, she didn't. was kind of she was kind of rude to obi-wan in attack of the clones and the second you're rude to Ewan McGregor like that, no. Mm, that's fair. Good point. You're on my you're on my bad list. You're on Andrew's no no list. Maybe she just had a bad day and it was just she's normally not like that. Yeah, like you can't just you judge know, a person on one little instance. Dude, that's fair too. You can when it's Obi Wan Kenobi. Obi Wan <laughs> Anyways. So Tan Wee's dead. Yes. R. I. P. Just just this laying there, rough, like, dead. Like, you couldn't yeah. even, like, it would better if, like, he was, like, trying to, like, crawl away, and then it stopped, and then he died, but whatever. I um, was pretty impressed how she recognized that was Tanway right away. Cause for me, it just said, like, yeah, all of them. I couldn't really tell the difference. Um, I mean, you're not wrong. Like, I... I <laughs> Other than the reason they have different clothes between <laughs> so you can tell uh, them Lama apart. Sue and Alice is so you can tell the difference. Um, but, you know, she grew up on there, so she it's just like the clones, like the clones on, know though. each other. Hold on. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Sue has a freaking head fin. True, like a mohawk. I, I don't, I wouldn't know that. Like he looks completely different. Sure, I, but those two dinner. Apparently, not enough for me to realize that there's okay. a difference. I just go by the clothes. Okay. Yeah, he's a fashion kind of guy, Andrew. Okay. It's all about his fashion. <laughs> okay. Okay. But anyway, they see the dead body. Omega reacts, and then Fennec uh, reveals herself. And I was just. All right, this is going to be a showdown. Two bounty hunters going for the same asset. And how is it going to play out? And I thought all of the fight scenes between the two were great. I, Amazing. It was just oh, they really, were phenomenal. Really, really great. And um, 
my favorite part was probably when he threw the grenade and she swapped down, kicked it. Like that was just a sweet It was move. so dope. And that then, soccer save kick. And then like dope. blowing up the the suit the suitcase. The briefcase with all the the credits in it and it just shattered and blew up and fell everywhere. I was like, This is intense. It was so, pretty good. Um during all this, you know, Omega, she runs and get away. Um, and so they're fighting, and Omega comes to a room with a green room. We see she goes in there, and there's these green tubes filled with pickles. liquid pickles, maybe. Yeah. Probably. And pickle Snokes. That's not. Oh gosh. Um, not everything is Snokes <laughs> because it's cloned. <laughs> but are we all what... puppets for the Emperor, anyways? What? Are we all puppets you... for the Emperor, anyways? What are you, what are what are you, you talking, talking about? about? <laughs> That's what Snoke was a puppet. Yeah, but I... okay. What does that have to do with us? <laughs> no, I'm just anyway. There's, there's these clone bodies of some sort inside these tubes. I think the first one was a, a Celestian. Yeah, it looked like that. Pancake face. So, like, maybe... maybe. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> you never heard that term? How do you... Do, do we know how the Celestians feel about that, Jeremiah? We that don't. Very yes, they don't exist, so they have no feelings. Oh, my no. God. They're... they're... Get, you, just move so on. If you've never on. heard that <laughs> phrase, pancake no. face? No. I have, yes. Nine nub is... Referred to that as pancake face. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's very rude of whoever decided to do that. And right. based on this clone, it was the, what my pancakes look like when I try and make pancakes. <laughs> it, was, it was janky. So, um, wow. Okay. Anyway, uh, Omega finds a con like control panel thing or whatever, and starts turning it on and uh, doing long range communication to show her location to the Bad Batch. So they immediately pick that up right away and find her, and they get out of there to, to go to her. Um, so that that happened. Um, and then, you know, Fennec and Cad goes back to Fennec and Cad Bane, and they're fighting. And Cad Bane gets knocked out from an explosion. And then Fennec finds Omega in this room with the green tubes. And so here we get a little bit more information about Fennec's intentions. So Fennec knows that if Cad Bane makes a delivery, that it's bad. But she wants to, to do something good for Omega. We don't know exactly what it is at this point, what it is. But at this time, it seems like... Fennec is on the good side in a sense. Do you think she that was her being authentic, or do you think that was just her trying to get Omega to come with her willingly? Uh, yeah, I think it was her being authentic because of what we get at the end of the episode. Like, really? she talks to Nala Say, and it's clear that Nala Say was the one who contacted her and hired her to get Omega back. And so I genuinely think she was telling the truth in hopes of getting Omega back, taking her to Nala Say. She's still going to get paid. Well, sure. You know what well, I mean? What, I, what like... I think What I think is that Nala Say wouldn't have actually met up with her on Camino. I think she would have taken her somewhere else and hit her somewhere to be safe. Because mm -hmm. Nala Say is, you know, very uh, attached to her. Yeah. So... Um, so as they're talking, Toto comes, coming in, all right, they grab Omega, because obviously he feels bad that it's, like, his fault that she escaped, so he's trying to, like, earn back Cad Bane's approval. That he didn't have in the first place, but, yeah. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> um, sad, I kind of feel bad for thing. Toto, like, the entire t episode. Like, yeah. dang, Omega's, like, speaking the truth right now, like... The whole time. Like, well, that's not a good friend. He's not going to fix your leg. and Yeah. He's in a and rough so, spot. 
Toto goes to grab Omega, and Fennec throws some knives at him, or what did, I don't know what she threw at him. Something. Throwing something, stars. Some sort of, the, of a weapon, yeah. And so, Toto, he crashes into one of the green cylinders. The pickle jars. Pickle jars. And it starts to leak a little bit. Um, but, um... But then Omega, Omega runs over to the console. And does she like release it or how? Did, I, I can't she remember. Released it. She, releases she released it, it and it falls on top. I was like, "This is gonna uh, be terrible uh, and gross." Uh, <laughs> this <laughs> giant thing falls on Fennec, crashes open, and it's like a giant. It's like, a Kaminoan. Kaminoan. Yeah. Body naked, just falls on her. A lifeless, <laughs> naked, slimy Kimono. <laughs> oh my gosh! And this is like the the wrecker version of a Kimono. Like it's, it's huge, big, it's... lot bigger head. Yeah, you could, it's this a bigger, mu more muscle. I was this. I was watching it with Mikaya. Mikaya goes, <laughs> I was like, yeah. I don't. Oh gosh. All over um, that nice. She she things. definitely like let the pickle out of the pickle jar. That's for sure. Um. Yep. Okay. Yep. All right. Uh. <laughs> you did that. Good. We acknowledge it, and we're gonna move on. <laughs> so Omega, she runs away. Um. And there's another fight between. Oh, the Cad Bane grabs her again, right? And then yep. Fennec shows up again, and they start fighting again. And Omega... And... Okay, she, she runs away, and she runs... She sees the um, escape pod things. Yeah. And then she's like, okay, I'm going to find a way down there. And she finds the stair set. Because, you know, it's down a hallway. Or not the stair set, the ladder. And she there's like a long, kind of dark hallway. At the end of it, there's a ladder that goes down to the lower level where the pods are. And right as she's about to go in there... Bane, Cad Bane walks right. up. Yeah. And so um, they were fighting, but it was, I thought it was interesting. There's a little scene that where when Fennec arrives, she's fighting, and then she grabs Omega and pushes her down pushes on her, the hallway yeah. to get her out of the fight, which yeah. I thought was uh, very interesting to, like, you know, I need her alive type of thing because yeah. Cad Bane wasn't concerned about that. She's, he just wanted to deliver Cause I'm sure that the Kaminoans could have extracted the DNA from Omega if she died. I don't know. Um, Maybe. But they they I, said. But Cabin literally said like you're lucky that they want you alive. So I don't yeah. know. Well, and then uh, the Nalasu was like, you've got you've got to extract the DNA first. And then you can terminate her. Yeah. That is true. Yeah. Yeah. So it seems Unless like they just... do kind of need her alive. Kind of like Grogu. Like, they couldn't kill him and just... Like, they needed him alive. I think because they probably need more than a certain ounce of blood. Like, they need to do it multiple times like they did with Grogu. Yeah. Kind of thing. So, I wonder if that's why. You yeah. know, it's crazy. It would almost be better if they, like, had a subscription service. Mm. But, or uh, like they just like gave her coffee instead. See, you know, I was going somewhere. I was going somewhere with that, Drew. <laughs> yeah, but you were going down a path I don't think I could have followed. So what? No, what? <laughs> okay, you know what? <laughs> I literally, okay, everyone listening, <laughs> look, I know my transitions have been kind of bad the last few times, and I was really trying to set this one up. I was looking for an opportunity, and you know that meme of the bus on the train tracks <laughs> and then the train comes through it. I'm the bus. That was my segue. And then Drew just, it's fine. It's fine. You know what? Let's listen to a word. Andrew, guess what? Ahsoka's at the coffee shop. From the sponsor of today's episode, Wesley Andrews, coffee and tea. Hey everyone, Andrew here. I'm pleased to tell you that the sponsor for today's episode is Wesley Andrews coffee and tea. If you don't know anything about Wesley Andrews, you definitely should. Let's see if Boom does an award-winning coffee does roaster this good. shop in Minneapolis, Minnesota, and they make fantastic coffee. 
The awesome thing is that they have a subscription service that gets those amazing coffee beans. I feel like my mom was door. just stripped from me. Either weekly, <laughs> in cold bi- blood. My bad, my bad. Basis. Unfortunately, we're all being negative. You'll get it next time. Virus right now. <laughs> that being said, there's always Tuesday. Try some new coffee and support a local business. I know they'll greatly appreciate it, and we will too. After all, using the code Empire Radio with a capital E and a capital R with no space at checkout. What if you start a new subscription at WesleyAndrews.cc? You'll get 50% off. What, your first if, what purchase. if he lost signal because he's driving? Of you. Get 50% off. Support a local Minneapolis coffee shop and support your favorite Star Wars podcast. In the words of Emperor Palpatine, do it. Do it. Do it. Do it, I guess, until we're all doing it. <laughs> yeah. Do it. Get a coffee subscription. Get her done. Do so, it. So, anyway. So, something I wanted to ask you guys about. So I think it's at this point in the sh- episode where we see this, but Cad Bane's hat comes off, and it seems like he has a metal panel on his head. Oh, we see that, like... Three or four times before this, yeah. When but, he's in the hold and stuff, like there's a, there's a few times where he's talking to Omega, and but even before this, that well, even when he t- the plate. he like yeah did a hat to her earlier in the episode, you saw it. Oh, I only noticed it at the end because it was just more prominent, I guess. It yeah, was but, very I, prominent at that point when his hat fell off, but um. So I never went back and watched that Cad Bane versus Boba Fett thing, but he gets shot in the head. Oh, he gets yeeted. So is this supposed to imply that that scene actually happened? Yep. And this takes place after? Mm -hmm. It does imply that, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I actually explained this to Micaiah while we were watching this earlier, and she was like, so do you think... Do you think they'll ever go back? And I'm like, probably not in this show. I well, like, not if, awesome. not if they showed us that. Like, I feel like that's their way to say that it's canon without actually showing us that. You know? Right. Yeah. I mean, if anything, it might. Now, this is a stretch. It's a big stretch. But it, I, the only other time I could see this being shown and working is in Book of Boba. Like a flashback. Yeah, but then they'd have to do it live action. That'd be cool though. Yeah, I mean, but like, no. Cad Bane I, I, line a- action? That'd be so sick. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I, I don't think we'll ever see it. But I do think I do think that they are very much implying. Like, this is their, this is Filoni's nod. Like, he knows he's, he knows we've seen it. He knows we know what happens. Cowboy hat. And yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's exactly what he's doing. <laughs> he's like, hey, see, I didn't, we didn't do the episode, but this happened. This mm-hmm. happened, see? So it is so, canon. Then with this, with the reference to Boba Fett and this nod with the panel on the head, do you think we're going to see Boba Fett in this series? No. When they said the word Boba Fett, I was like... Boba Fett? Oh, I, I freaked out. You can ask Andrew. I, I was like, <gasps> like, are they going to go get Boba Fett to help get the bounty back? But then they got... Omega like right away and I was like oh yeah it's like there's no way in the scene where they mentioned Boba too there's like no way really that they're gonna even bring him into the story and Drew, Drew got so excited I was but, so excited no I don't think we're gonna see Boba Fett because I feel like the, the we've already we've already got two like big big name bounty hunters in the show like we don't true we don't need unless unless you know Tom but, not but, Tom Lee, but he's not, not really a big name one. right but huh? as as far as Star Wars lore, he is. Oh yes, as the yeah. lore. But right now, he's not really a well known bounty hunter. No, no, no. Right. But what I'm saying is, like, every time you add a popular character to a show, it takes up bandwidth. It takes up space Correct. in that show, right? My my question just, is like, why aren't they hunting for Boba as well? They have no idea where he is. Yeah, That's he dis- he disappeared. Yeah, but they they, they don't say have, that he they, disappeared at the beginning of the war. Which he did, because oh. you know he he disappeared after Geonosis, and so they're like, it would. I'm sure they're probably like it would be too much time and money to try to find him, right? You know, 
but Omega. I just, it's I like, just wonder though because Boba Fett is, you know, kind of like a sister, like brother, brother and sister kind of. Yeah. Like if that would mean, if they would use that as a way to bring him in. That's, um, I I think before like we are talking about in the beginning of this whole show like we, we're talking about people we could see. Boba Fett was one of them, Ahsoka, and we were talking about how, like, I don't think we're going to see them. We don't want to see them because we're going to get a lot of them coming up in other live-action stuff. Um, But now more than ever, I feel like the p- potential possibility of seeing Boba is not out of the realm of possibility anymore. You know what I mean? Like, if, if we see Boba, we see Boba. Like, it wouldn't really surprise me as much now than like before because they've talked about him they mentioned him and like yeah. you said jeremiah like they are like technically siblings like it, yeah. it could be at one point maybe not in this season but next season the bad batch is hunting for them for for boba maybe to see because omega wants to see someone that's like her i don't know i don't know i again i don't really want I don't really want any more like a list characters in this. You know? Yeah, like, it's gonna get a little Rex. bit too yeah, like we crowded. Seen Rex, and I think I think Rex, the way that they treated him, great, just enough. Like, oh, there he is. It's great. We we loved it, and now he's gone. You know. Um, Do you think Cat Baden's gone for the rest of the show? No, probably not, because we need, we still need an antagonist searching for Omega, because like. The, the possibilities are, A, they pick another bounty hunter, and it's Boba Fett. And Wait, is he a bounty hard. hunter right now? Yeah. He's 13. He dude, was working with Aura Singh and I guess, Boss. yeah. Right, he had a crew in the That's fair, He, yes. like, straight up had a crew. Um, you know, and then it is, he is referenced in Dark Disciple as well as being a bounty hunter, which is canon. Um, but like, so we're either going to get another bounty hunter. They're going to, they're going to hire another bounty hunter or it's it. We're going to have a reoccurring antagonist in Cad Bane. And I, I would rather it be Cad Bane. Yeah. So. So anyway, that, all that being said, this is when, um, Omega makes her way to the, what do they call it? The fly pods, which is that what they called it. AirPods. AirPods. No, that's what uh, that's what I have. Life pods. Life pods. That's, that's what they what were. Was. Life pods. Okay. Yeah, or something like that. So they're fly pods, but I don't know. It could be but right. She has climbed down classic giant ladder on the outside of the building while she's handcuffed, and so she's going down slowly, and Toto chases her, and she jumps on Toto to, and rides him all the way down. It's a terrible. Again, architecture in Star Wars. These are supposed to be escape pods, right? Yeah. I think. Well, this, wasn't the, this was her easiest way to get it because if the power is all, off in the whole facility. Yeah, but did her... they have an actual elevator? Do well, we know? Yeah, probably. Probably. I hope so. I hope that but it was like, like, hey, here's this... an emergency. Slowly climb down a ladder, single file, until you get to your ladder. That's probably like you if know? the power runs out. It was probably. But... Okay. The, the shortest distance the light pops for her to navigate li- all the way through yeah. it would have been more. She Tra- might get trapped. She'd get, you yeah. know, yeah. the old facility could have been collapsed or anything, something like that. Like, And the life pods aren't, cons- they're not like escape pods, right? The way I understood it was like they launch, but they can't go too far. Like, they can no, only. They're, they no, no, no. They, go, they can go through space. Yeah, because really? we then see them it... go through space in the Clone Wars. No, I know, but I th- I thought that Toto says something like that. Like, you're not going to get too far in that. Well, it's because it's janky. It's like, yeah. Oh, is that why? And I... he also breaks it when he's flying yeah. off. Yeah. Well, that what, too, but. That is what caused it to crash, too, was that one yeah. little panel coming off. So, mm-hmm. um, so she gets down there. She gets in the pod, and she flies off. And Toto, he's gr- holding on. And... Like, he's like, you're not going anywhere. And she actually, like, she's like, he's like, oh, crap. And then goes and he's holding on and breaks the panel off. And then on the display, right where that panel was, there's a little blinking light, like warning light. Yeah. And so that's what causes the crash um, or to start to fall. 
And so um, while she's escaping, uh, Fennec kicks Cad Bane off the ledge. And I totally forgot that he had those jetpack shoes or whatever. I was like, he's dead. And then he started flying again. <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah, that's right. I forgot about that. <laughs> and so then he flies back up and um, he tries to use his ship, but Fennec sabotaged it so he can't fly off and sh- she flies off. And um, But as Omega, she's falling to her death. Uh, the bad bitch are able to catch the pod and rescue her. And so... Um, I thought it was a nice reunion of them. Yeah, like, for sure. Yeah, it was really nice. Well, and that I think the, something that was we, the heart wrenching part. Too. Something that we missed too was when she first called out on her comm link early in the episode when she first got it back, and she heard Hunter for the first time. She like freaked yeah. out. She's like, oh, Hunter, like you're actually yeah. not dead. And I thought that was a really cool like attention to detail moment where it was like. Oh yeah, she thought Hunter was already dead. Like she thought there was no coming back. And to see that that was something that she was able to see right away, like realize, oh, he's not actually dead, was pretty cool. I liked yeah. it. Yeah, and it was. This is when Omega is like, like, why are they after me? And like she's like just so confused and doesn't understand why they want Sad. her. And so then this is like. They had to explain, and they didn't really say a lot. I'm assuming, off camera, they explained. They did more because but... Echo says, "Hunter, you've got to tell her." And then yeah. there's like a scene change. Yeah. To I'm pretty sure it's to Fennec. At that point. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, and yeah. so it goes to Fennec, and she gets a call from Nala Say, and she's like, "Well, she escaped with the same group that I encountered on Pantora." Um, and Nala says happy get that are gone. And so she's like, you still get your payment because that's what I wanted. And so, um, so this is where we find out that, um, there's different lines drawn with the bounty hunters. And so basically I think, um, Lama Su, Tanwe and Nala say they all know that both those bounty hunters were hired. Yes. But I think that um, they were hired separately. Like, hey, yeah. you call this one and then you call this one yeah. type of thing. Yeah. Well, because that's, so, what, that's what they said in the earlier episode. Like, because Nala was like, well, we already have a bounty hunter on this. Oh, yeah. And then he was like, well, we need to call another one now. And so. But we know, but we know that they were hired by, by separately because one had different orders from the other so um because i was like under the i was like just thinking that it was one of those things where after she was after nala realized that they're gonna have to like he wanted her dead afterwards that she was she called up finnick and was saying this is where they're gonna go this is a rendezvous point so it's like it wasn't that finnick was never not still hunting them it was more so like change a plan if you keep her alive or you get her from Cad Bane, then you're able to, we'll pay you, you know? Yeah. So but my question is, did Nala say, tell Fennec to kill Tan Wei? That's what I want. Ooh, prob- probably. Because he would have been there or she would have been there, uh, Tan Wei. Yeah. Like, not like, Expecting like a fight, might not probably with an arm, didn't have a, obviously well, she, didn't have a crew with she, her. Finnick did tell Omega, she's like, it's just part of the job. Yeah. So, yeah. So, I, I don't, but I don't know. I don't know if it was like, I can't let a witness go because I'm, I'm revealing my intentions to be contrary to what you think they are. That sort of a thing. I think, I think at the very least, Tanwi was just collateral damage. But do you think that it was more so that was Fennec's discretion to kill, or do you think Nala Say said to kill, or it's okay to kill Tanwe? I, I think it was probably one of those things where they were like, 
it was very ambiguous. She she would have been like, you got to do what you, you do what you need to do. Whoever's in the way, just make sure yeah. that you get Omega. Yeah, because I guess seeing that another bounty hunter showed up to steal the bounty. Like if Tanway reported that back, then he would, or Lama Su would know that there's division. I mean, it's a risk allowing Tanwei to, yeah, to to live after that. After she sees Finnick, so yeah. yeah, it's all part of the business. And so then, it the end of the scene or show is where Omega is talking with Hunter and. Uh, Omega's still scared about everything. And she's like, they're just going to keep sending bounty hunters after me. It's never going to end. Like, we can't be fighting nonstop forever. But Hunter's like, you have us. We'll keep you safe. And he's like, I promise you, you're never going to go back to Camino. And I feel like that promise he's not going to be able to keep. <laughs> what do you guys think? Bro, Mike, think the first thing that came out of Mikaela's mouth, the second he said that, she was like, man, every time someone promises something in one of these shows, it, it, it like that's that's the foreshadowing that it's the opposite is going to happen. Yeah. So I just want to know, like, I don't know how, how, how or why they'd be back. on Camino. Like, do you think it's because, dude, I Cad think the Bane... season finale is going to take place on Camino. It yeah. Ha- like, I just want to know, like, how, why do they get there? Like, is it because Omega eventually does get caught by Cad Bane again or another bounty hunter and is brought there? Or do you think they as a group, the Bad Batch plus Omega, choose to go there for something? Oh, choose, that's a good question. They could choose to go there to try to remove the chip from Crosshair. Yeah. Because that's still a big situation that they haven't resolved just, or figured I out. Just think, I just think that with uh, the, now the new details that the Kaminoans are after Omega, they're less likely to want to even do that, I think. Mm-hmm. But I just, I just don't know. Yeah, I mean, at, I, I feel like they're going to end up there at some point for some reason, and I don't, I do not yet know why. But I have a gut feeling that they will. Yeah, me too. So, yeah, right. yeah. Well, that's everything I have. Any other ref- uh, comments about the episode? No, I'm, I'm good. That covered everything for me. Me All too. Right. Drew, you wanna or Andrew, do you wanna go over the social media? I sure do. I would love to. It is my greatest joy in life. That sounds really sarcastic. Um, I was going to make a joke, and, and it just sounded negative. That's not actually true. I enjoy this part. Uh, so, yeah, you can uh, you can connect with us on the Internet. And I'll start off this by saying that we do what we do because of the, our listeners, because of you who are watching on Twitch, who are watching later on YouTube, or listening to the audio version on one of the streaming services. Uh and so it's really important that we can actually connect with you for us. Uh, like, no matter how big we get, you know, quote, how big or popular we may get at some point in the future, like, uh, you guys are always going to be at the center of what we do. Uh, so with that being said, the ways that you can connect with us are, uh, first, Instagram and Facebook, um, both of which are Empire Radio Podcasts. That's our handle. So at Empire Radio Podcasts, both Instagram and Facebook. Uh, the second one is on YouTube. So you can go to YouTube, type in Empire Radio, a Star Wars podcast, and um, watch all of the video versions of the podcast episodes after we stream them. So I'll get to this in just a second, but we stream all of the recordings on Twitch live as we're recording them. And so when we're done, there is a video version of every podcast episode that we post on our YouTube. So you can go watch the live stream after the fact and see us make weird looks at one another or scowl at Drew's jokes or, you know, whatever. Uh, it's, it's always a fun time. So you can connect with us on YouTube as well. Um, like I mentioned, we do have a Twitch channel, twitch.tv forward slash empire radio. And we do live stream all the bad batch episodes and all of the empire radio episodes every Tuesday and Friday, 8 PM central, 9 PM Eastern. Uh, Fridays will be as long as the bad batch is running. And then we'll resume again whenever there's another show consistent show that releases on Friday. So 
right now you have two chances to catch a stream every week until Bad Batch Season 1 ends. Uh, and last but surely, surely not least, we have a, our own Discord server, which is one dynamite heck, one <laughs> heck of a chaotic party uh it's it's a lot of fun it's it's a whole lot of fun and i would say like a solid 75 to 80 percent of the inside jokes that we make are directly from there so if you want to be in on all of that uh if you want like every time we say guys go make memes like that's where the memes end up yeah so i'm excited wanna, to go see what memes yeah. are there right now so uh yeah, so uh, if you want to find the memes, if you want to enjoy them, if you want to make memes for yourself, even at our expense, because that happens all the time, uh, join the Discord. Uh, you do need a link for that. So you're probably wondering, okay, where do I where do I get the link? Well, I was I was wondering. <laughs> if you're listening to the audio version of this podcast in a streaming service, go down into the description underneath the little blurb about the episode. There's one. There's a spot that says connect with us. You click the little link that starts with uh, links.co forward slash, you know, and it says Empire Radio. Click that. It's actually a landing page for all of the social medias that I mentioned. There's icons for all of them. It also includes a link to join the Discord and a link to leave us a voicemail. So if you've been here for a Tuesday stream or if you've listened to a Tuesday episode before, we answer uh, voicemail questions and or react to jokes or Star Wars raps or whatever people send in. Uh, and that is the link that you can do that. That link is always uh, is also on our Twitch in the About Us section and in our Instagram in uh, our bio. It's the link in our bio. So if you hit that that uh, one of the three, uh, you know, social media platforms that I just mentioned, either listening to the podcast, Twitch, or Instagram, you can find everything there. Literally everything. It's like a Pandora's box or something. I don't know. Or Narnia. Organ Organarnia. Organarnia. So yeah. That was a reference to a another movie. Mm. Or Narnia, you're right. Or Narnia. So that's that's gonna be the way you do all that. Um and if you haven't sent us a voicemail, uh here is your opportunity. I'm inviting you. We have two already for the next this next Tuesday. The offer is still on the table. We need ten more. We need ten more. And they need to be like legitimate questions. Like, I, we can't have 10 dad jokes and, like, two legitimate questions. Or, like, like 10 Drew's mic. Yeah. <laughs> well, I would enjoy that. <laughs> that was funny. But if if we get, and this, this offers on the table all the time, if we get up to 12 voicemails that are, like, legitimate questions that we can discuss, we can talk about on air, whatever we're doing on a Tuesday, we will hit pause on that, and we will do an episode completely dedicated to voicemails. So it can't be 11. It has to be 12 or more. 12 or more. That's the cutoff. So we have two. We need 10 more. And uh, we'll do a full episode on that. So there you fun, go. Fun. Well, else, boys? yes, we oh. didn't rank it. Oh. What Drew, was our over, over, overall thoughts? I thought this Get episode... This is in my top four. Like, it's pretty good. Like, what a random. I don't know. <laughs> what like, random way to, well, what a random way to say that. This is my top four. It's like, I liked episode one. I I liked, like, a couple of the other episodes in between. Last episode was really good. One of my favorites. And the one before that with Rex was one of my favorites. So it's, it's in my top four. Like, this is probably my fourth favorite overall. But as an episode by itself. Because of how intense that bounty hunter fight was, I'm gonna give it a ten out of ten. Like I love this Ooh, episode. It was a wow. good episode. Whoa. All right. I was not disappointed. The only thing may okay, nine point five. The only <laughs> point five thing I was disappointed about big, was big that kind of what uh Jeremiah said, like I didn't really want to see Omega get away right that fast. But, I said that. Or <laughs> you guys both we agreed all with it. it. Yeah, whatever. But yes, what what Andrew said, like I that was my only complaint about this episode. Like it, it went a little quick, but to get all that detail about why who was hunting, like why and all that stuff, I thought that was really good information that we needed to move yeah. on with the story. For sure. And so I enjoyed it, and yeah, nine point five out of ten for me. Andrew, I am gonna give it. 
a seven and a half. Hmm. Nah, I give it an eight. I give it an eight. Final answer. I give it an eight out of ten. It's not bad. I'd probably give it an eight out of ten as well. Yeah. All right. All right. That's everything. Yeah. 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 All right. This has been another stupendous <laughs> episode of Empire Radio. I'm Jeremiah. I'm Drew. And I'm Andrew. And may the force be with you. Oh. Oh.